Hello, welcome to my presentation. I am standing in this beautiful field of grass. Um, my presentation is called Adam on Diamond, more than a field of grass, because for the longest time, I thought that's all it was um, and didn't really understand it. So I took this time to learn more about it and here it is, I'll take the rest inside. Okay, so um, just to start, this falls under Unit 9, Kirtland Opposition and the Missouri Expulsion, and the major concept, Adam on Um The type of doctrine that this is, I would say, is supporting, because it um, is not necessary to our salvation, but it does relate to core doctrines like the fall of Adam and Eve, the blessings of the priesthood, and prophetic revelation. Parts of it are esoteric, and people like to speculate on um, the like location of the Garden of Eden, um, of the like the remains of Joseph Smith mentioned some altars or an altar there. They like to talk about that. I learned uh, and other things. There's some speculation on things, but I think it falls under supporting best. The scholarly articles. Um, one is by Alexander L. Baugh. Um, published by the Religious Studies Center in 2017 called The History and Doctrine of Adam on Diamond Revelation. The other one is Jacob W. Olmsted, Far West in Adam on Diamond, uh, published by the church in Revelations and Context. Um, the Prophetic Talks, one was by Orson Pratt in 1877. The other was by Mark E. Peterson in 1980. Um, both in general conference. The first one was called The Valley of God Where Adam Dwelt. The second was called Adam the Archangel. So to start out uh, introducing my first key concept, here's my first Doctrine and Covenant section. Um, 107 verses 53 through 56. It says, Three years previous to the death of Adam, he called Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, and Methuselah, who were all high priests with the residue of his posterity who were righteous, into the valley of Adam on Diamon, and there bestowed upon him, upon them his last blessing. And the Lord appeared unto them, and they rose up and blessed Adam, and called him Michael the Prince, the Archangel. And the Lord administered comfort unto Adam, and said unto him, I have set thee to be at the head, a multitude of nations shall come of thee, and thou art a prince over them forever. And Adam stood up in the midst of the congregation, and notwithstanding he was bowed down with age, being full of the Holy Ghost, predicted whatsoever should befall his posterity unto the latest generation. So, pretty cool. Uh, first thing I learned significant about Adam on Dion, and, and this is just, it's a place where Adam and Eve lived uh, after they were taken from the Garden of Eden. And it's a really special place where about three years before Adam passed away, he was able to gather all of his righteous posterity and share this awesome moment with them, um, bless them and fill the spirit. And I think that it's neat that the Lord revealed that. To Joseph Smith. It's kind of special. And then my Joseph Smith uh, papers quote comes from a blessing that he gave to his parents. Joseph gave to his parents. Uh, he said, Blessed of the Lord is my father. And then he quotes the scriptures that I just, or the revelation that I just talked about. And he continues, So shall it be with my father. He shall be called a prince over his posterity, holding the keys of the patriarchal priesthood over the kingdom of God on earth, even the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. And he shall sit in the general assembly of patriarchs even in counsel with the Agent of Days, when he shall sit and all the patriarchs with him, and shall enjoy his right and authority under the direction of the Agent of Days. I just think it's really neat that he talked about this in context of a blessing uh, to his parents. It's kind of a cool parallel between Adam blessing his posterity and Joseph blessing his parents. Um, and yeah, just a really neat moment. I liked it a lot that happened. The second key concept um, goes with my second BNC verse, which is actually the whole section, 116. Uh, it says, Spring Hill is named by the Lord Adam on Diamon, because, said he, it is the place where Adam shall come to visit his people, where the Ancient of Days shall sit, was spoken by Daniel the prophet. So, very cool second concept. Adam is coming back to Adam on Diamon in the future. Um, and Joseph Fielding Smith helps us understand a little bit more what that's going to look like. He published a three-volume work called Doctrines of Salvation. And in there it says that Adam, once he comes back, he'll do kind of an accounting. Um, 
a judgment, not the final judgment, but of those people who held and exercised priesthood keys, since Adam was the first to hold them, they'll return to him, talk about that, and return the keys to him. Adam, holding all of those, will eventually return them to Christ in preparation for Christ reigning during the millennium on earth, which I think is so cool. <laughs> I think that's awesome. So let's make sure I got everything here. I think I did. Um, my key takeaway is that Adam on Diamond is way more than a grassy field. <laughs> um, it's a special place. It's a link between the past of God's people and their future. Um, and it's a real blessing that God let us know about this. It's not the most key doctrine, but I think it serves as a reminder that God will fulfill his promises. And he blesses us with cool gems of knowledge uh, as we're righteous and do good things. So, yes, thank you. <laughs>